In this video, I'm going to run through how I go about assembling an IKEA flat pack cabinet. Now, it's pretty straightforward. All you have to do is follow the instructions very carefully and you should be all right. But there are a few tips and tricks along the way that can help the job go a little bit smoother. So I'll share those with you today. Um, first of all, I'll just show you what we're up to and then we'll get on to assembling the flat pack. And then later on, I'll show you an alternative method that I use to set the rail height uh, for the base cabinets. Now we've just moved into this house and we're finding we're a little bit short of space uh, for kitchenware and dining room stuff. And uh, a little bit more counter space would be nice as well. So in this little area here, we're gonna build a little nook uh, to act as a transition between the kitchen and the dining room. There's the kitchen, there's the dining room, and there's the living room. And what we're gonna do is in this corner here, we're gonna have a 60 base cabinet and another one there. And then in between the two will be about a 40 centimeter gap. And the same at the top, we'll have some eye level, two eye level cupboards with a 40 centimeter gap and a couple of shelves in between. So that'll mean um, uh, you can sit here uh, with your legs under the counter, have a laptop or tablet or something like that and look up recipes. And the shelves up here can be used for recipe books and that sort of thing. So it'll be ideal uh, transition zone uh, between the living areas and the kitchen. Right, so let's get started. First, I'll show you the few tools that you'll need. I normally use one of these flat spatulas to open the box and I'll show you how to do that in a minute and then I have a normal um, star screwdriver and one um, on a drill and then uh, a square and a pencil and a tape and a hammer is always useful. Now you'll notice I'm working on a table we just find it so much easier to work on a table uh, the old body gets a bit tired if you're good at yoga or something like that, then be my guest, but uh, you'll find it a lot easier on the table. So let's get started and I'll just show you how I open the box. Now this can be quite a laborious process uh, to get the box open and you've got to be a bit careful because you can cut yourself on the edges of the cardboard. But what I do is I start off with the box upside down like that. Uh, this is a 60 cabinet we're going to open now. Right, this is the easiest way I've found to open these boxes. It can be a bit of a mission, you tearing bits off and that. And don't be tempted to use a box cutter uh, because you can damage the contents uh, with a box cutter. So what I do is slip it in the joint like that and then you just pull it along. That's that one done. That one. There we go, all done. Now the next trick, before you open it, and I, I have to confess that Anne taught me this, is you turn the box over. And the reason for that is that the, the instructions are on the top. So turn it over first and then open it. And there's the instructions. As Anne predicted, they're always on the top. So get those out first, get to page one. And IKEA recommends using two people. And uh, Anne and I found it goes much quicker if there's two of you and you work as a team. So there it says in the picture, two people. So that's what we do. And it's, it's always good to follow these instructions as carefully as you can. Now at this stage, it's probably a good idea to just have a good look at all the contents and make sure there's no damage because if there's any damage it's best to take them back at this stage uh, and IKEA is very good at returns they'll give you your money back or exchange it for you without any questions asked so always check the contents are okay before you start and one of the first things I do is locate all the bits and pieces and just shake that box there in there so and then open that up and we found this saves a lot of time okay then we get one of these um, clear plastic food containers and 
we found it goes much quicker if you just open your bag and dump all the contents in there then they're easily accessible and you can see exactly what you've got. What we do is just lay out the, these are the side walls of the cabinet. We lay it out exactly as they explain you to do in the manual and then Anne normally goes ahead and uh, inserts the metal dowels first and then I'll come behind with the screwdriver just to show you how these little metal dowels work um, that's going to be in one board and this is going to be in the other board and what you do is you slide it on like that and then twist it and as you do these jaws grab it and they pull the two boards together so you just have to do a little bit of twisting you don't have to tighten it very much and it brings the two boards perfectly together now these boards have been machined perfectly square so when they actually tightly together everything's square or should be but you still need to check that so she's checked the manual which holes those go into and she's doing it exactly as they say and then I'll come behind with my drill and I'll just say a word about that before we start now this is the drill I'm using now this drill has got a torque adjustment now always start a bit low because if you strip if you strip one of these in the wood then you've got a big problem so always start a bit low if it's not going in all the way then up your torque a little bit and also check that your drill bit fits nice and snugly in the screw these drill bits come in different sizes now if it's not fitting nice and snug what will happen is the drill bit will jump out and spin on the top of the head and strip the head of that screw and that's a headache as well so always be sure you're using the correct size uh, drill bit right so let's uh, do these and I'll show you how I do it we just line it up get it as vertical as you can and use as low a speed as you can as well it just gives you a bit more control okay the next step is to put the wooden dowels in the base of the cabinet now you've got to get it orientated properly you can just check your manual very carefully that you've got all the holes lined up correctly and there's a slot for the backing which is there so you know that's the back of the cabinet that also helps you to get it orientated okay so Anne's going to stick in the wooden dowels now according to the instructions which holes to use now those wooden dowels are there to guide the the base and the sides together in exactly the correct position and then the metal dowels with that little cam that I showed you are to pull it together so you don't use any glue that little cam acts as the glue and pulls the sides together so that makes it a lot less messy and a lot uh, less work okay. right now we're going to attach the base to the sides so make sure the groove make sure this groove runs all the way because then you know you've got it orientated correctly okay then with two people you just line it up okay, now, okay. so then you just tap it gently into place and as I said the wooden dowels will guide everything now we've got to tighten those metal cams now you can see that's the head of the metal dowel which is in this uh, side plate so if you orientate your little cam like that so that the gap is facing the dowel then everything goes quite smoothly so then you push it in put your screwdriver on there and just wiggle it a bit and put pressure with the screwdriver until it pops in like that and then you turn it clockwise and you'll feel it gets quite tight and if there's any gap there you'll see it'll close up so we'll just put the others in right so we put the cabinet on the base and now we're going to slip the backing in 
Now with, with the backing, uh, there's two sides to the backing. There's a dull side and there's a white side. Please remember to put the white side to the inside of the cabinet so that you see it when you open the cabinet. Otherwise, I've done it before where you put the white side to the out and it's a headache. You can't take it off very easily. Right, so Anne's going to slip that in for us. Now there's a groove there obviously where the backing slips in. Right, and just remember that those little slots go at the top of the cabinet. They are there for the rail brackets. Uh, they stick through those holes. Right, the next step is to put this little metal support on and it goes on the top there and uh, helps to stabilize the board. And it does that with these little uh, plastic brackets which clip onto here and they grip the board at the top like that and hold it together. So we'll put those on first. It clicks into place like that. Go in with the long bit there first, more or less equidistant, and it clips in like that. And then we take it and we put it so that it's gripping the backing to stop the backing from flapping. Slide it down. And then on the top here, you'll see there's a hole in the cabinet uh, which you have to line up and then put a screw in there. And then same again, there's also one in the front and these stabilizing rods just help to keep everything uh, from distorting. Now the next step is to nail the backing on. Now the, one of the jobs of the backing is to keep everything square. So before you nail that on, I always like to check that my cabinet is more or less square before I start. And if it's not like this one isn't, you just have to move it a little bit until you've got it square like that. Because if you nail the backing on and it's not square, uh, then when you try and put two cabinets together, uh, they're not going to fit very well or you, you're going to struggle to get level cabinets at the top. Now, just to show you what I mean, let's pretend this line here is a level that you want your cabinets to be at. And this cabinet is square. We put him there on the level line. And this cabinet is out of square. So, when we try and put him on the level line, can you see what happens? He's not going to join flush with the other cabinet. And if we do clamp him and make him join flush to the other cabinet, then he's not level at the top. So that's why it's important to just check uh, that everything's square before you nail the backing on. Right, the next thing now is to nail the backing on. And you'll see there's a, a broken line that they provide for you to position your nails, which is very helpful. Now once I'm sure that my cabinet is square, then I go on to nailing the backing on. And uh, I like to secure these corners first. So I'll put one, one nail in the side wall of the cabinet. Now on the base of the cabinet we've got these little spaces. And the job of these spaces is to keep the base of the cabinet away from the wall to compensate for the fact that the top of the cabinet is also away from the wall because of the rail. And uh, that then allows it to hang vertical. Without this, it wouldn't hang vertical. You need to put the nails about six to eight inches apart. Um, I just estimate, I don't measure it. These little brackets are to hang the cabinet on the rail uh, that's attached to the wall. So we'll get that lined up. Just follow your instructions as to which holes to use. And then uh, these little stout screws are the ones 
that normally go in here. Right, um, these, because they're going to take some weight, I always like to just check that they tight and that my ratchet on my screwdriver is putting enough tension on there. That seems to be alright. And then we'll just flip it over and do the other one. Now I promised I'd show you an alternative method how to set up your rail height so that your plinth fits perfectly without any uh, adjustments because adjusting your plinth can be a bit of a headache. Uh, it's not easy to do. So uh, if your floor is a bit uneven, you might want to just use this method um, and you normally start at the highest point on your floor and then work off from there. Um, and I'll show you that in a minute. But I just wanted to explain another thing to you is that if you're putting your cupboards in on a concrete floor and then later on you're going to tile or use some other flooring up to the legs of the cabinet, then you're going to have a problem with your plinth because of the thickness of your flooring. Now the way you'd get around that is to estimate the thickness of your flooring and then to raise your rail by the same amount so that you end up with your plinth on the final flooring uh, and not on the concrete flooring because if you take it off the concrete flooring and when you put your real flooring in you're going to have to reduce your plinth by that amount and that's a headache. So I'll just show you that in a diagram. So this is the situation I'm talking about. Here's your concrete floor. If you put your legs on the concrete floor and you're setting up your kitchen before you put your final flooring in, you can see what's going to happen. The height of your flooring, we'll call it X millimeters, is going to take up some of the space for your plinth. Now, IKEA recommend your legs to be 80 uh, millimeters long. So you'll have to make your legs 80 plus X, and that's going to mean that you're going to have to raise your rail height by X uh, according to whatever the rail height is that IKEA recommend. So you can see that situation is going to mean quite a lot of trimming of your plinth and it's all around, it's a real headache. So think that out first if you can and I would estimate that to be a little bit more than it really is a millimeter or two because then uh, it's better to have a small gap here uh, then to have to adjust your plinth. As I'll, at this stage I'll put my feet on the cabinet. Right, and we obviously we'd put all four feet on and then I'll take a piece of plinth. Now the bottom of the plinth has got this little rubber seal a bit like a windscreen wiper that seals against the floor and the top of the plinth is just flat so what I do is put my plinth more or less in place like that and then I adjust the feet then I adjust the feet so they're about a millimeter longer than my plinth and I know for sure that my plinth's going to fit in there. I'll put the other feet on then what I do is put it up against the wall get a piece of rail, hook it on the rail brackets and then make a mark on the wall and then from there uh, I use a spirit level uh, to extend that mark and that'll be the top of my rail. Right, now with two people you be very careful you don't drag it because you can knock the feet off but pick it up and place it as close to the wall more or less where it's going to go then I take a bit of hanging rail and I hook it on and then I mark the top of the rail and now I just use a spirit level and I extend that line and that'll be the top of my rail. And if I set my rail to that line then the plinth should go on very easily without any adjusting. 
Right, this is a eye level cupboard and I just want to talk about putting the hinges on for the door. Uh, the instructions can be a little bit vague as to which holes you use to screw your hinges onto. So I'll just run through that quickly, how I go about it. Now the easiest way to do it is just line up, line up your door with your cupboard like that and then you can see uh, the hinge goes in there, that hinge will go in like that and so you know the other part of the hinge will go in there and I just mark them just so I don't get confused. Right, I'll just show you how these hinges work before I attach them. Uh, they come in two parts. This part clips onto the door and this part clips onto the cabinet. And I'll just show you how it works. Now you've got to be careful with this part. You can get it back to front quite easily. Now what sticks out of the cabinet, if you look carefully, there's a set of jaws and those got to face to the outside and then the other side is, is flatter and that faces into the cabinet and then these little plugs go in the holes in the cabinet and there's a screw that goes in there. Now what happens is once you've attached this to the door and this to the cabinet then what you do is bring the two together when, the, when you want to hang the door and you see that little there's a little rail there. That little rail hooks into these jaws here of the bit that's attached to the cabinet. So the way it goes in is you hook it on there first on that rail and then all you have to do is push the other end and it clips on like that. That's it. And then to take it off there's a little button at the back there. You just squeeze that and it clips off like that. So very very simple, very very clever and so easy to mount. And then there's some screws in there that's for adjusting the door angle and the gaps between doors etc. But I'll show you that in another video. Right now to attach the hinge bracket uh, to the cabinet uh, you need to just make sure you, as I said, you've got to have these little jaws facing outwards and you'll notice it's a bit rounded on that end and then this end is flat so that goes into the cupboard and then these two little dowels they just go in there like that but now an important point is make sure that this is all the way down and there's no gap there no gap underneath there before you tighten these if you get a gap underneath there then you'll really struggle to set up your door straight and everything because your uh, adjustments won't work very well and then you just tighten them down Then to attach the other part of the bracket to the door is very simple. There's also two dowels that go in to orientate it in this direction. There's a little flap here which uh, expands this area so that when it's seated properly you press that down and that holds it in place. So let's do that so long. So we get it in place like that. Again just make sure you're completely down on the flush with the surface there so there's no gaps there. Then you push this down and it clicks like that. So you put both of those on, both of those on and then I would hang the cupboard first and then put the doors on when the cupboard is hanging. Okay I thought I'd just show you how easy it is to click these doors into place. So let's do that. So you line, you line them up more or less Get the little rail in the back first, press the front, that clicks in, that's that one. Shine to the top one now. Done. So there we are. That's how easy it is. And then um, you need to do some adjusting sometimes to get the levels right and the gaps between the doors. But I'll show you that in another video. To take it off, there's a little button under there. You grip that, squeeze it and it clicks off and the top one as well. Squeeze it and it clicks off and there we go. It's as easy as that. Now in future videos I'll discuss how to assemble the kitchen drawers and how to fit them in the cabinets and also how to finish off with the plinths and the side panels and how to get the doors hanging nice and straight and the drawers uh, nice and even and neat.
So look out for those videos, they'll be coming up soon. Now if you found this useful, please like and share this video and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so. And if you have any comments, we'd love to hear from you. If you just scroll right down to the bottom, you'll find the comment section there. Thank you very much for watching.